You see, we have before us this morning one of the most vivid and insightful accounts of the Lord's appearance. You know, many were saying, hey, he, he, he hadn't risen. People were looking for proof. You know, sometimes uh, our faith tells us that we ought to believe, you know, if I can believe without seeing, then that's faith. But some folk have to see. And we thank God that in this particular lesson, we're going to find out that Jesus showed himself. In the resurrection of Luke, which is only the one of all the four gospels, he's the only one that talk about this particular walk to Emmaus, amen? It's a story that reveals to us not only something about who we are, but who Jesus is. You know, uh, Jesus opened our eyes for him and for who he is and how we can come to know him. See, some of us know about Jesus, amen? We've heard about Jesus. Oh, they heard about Jesus. They knew all the things that were going on. But you, 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 you got to know him for yourself. Sometimes you think you know Jesus, but you don't. Well, the journey to Emmaus is both a literal and spiritual journey. On one hand, it recounts the story of two disciples who, after the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus, they were walking seven miles to Emmaus. They're on that road. And all of a sudden, a stranger joined in and started walking with them. On the other hand, it outlines the, for us the journey that we take from recognizing Jesus to the understanding of what the scripture says about Jesus and to recognizing him for who he is and finally to our giving witness to the experience. See, what you've got to understand, Jesus seeks us. Amen. Everywhere you see, behold, I stand at the door and knock. See, Jesus went into places that he didn't have to go in because he went there because he was looking for us. You know, he was trying to find the sinners in order to change us around, but sometimes we're too busy in our own world that we don't really see Jesus for who he is. Although the disciples knew who Jesus was, they did not recognize him. These are the people that were with him in close proximity, but yet when he was walking with them, they didn't recognize who Jesus was. They knew a, a lot about him. They had been witnesses to all the miracles, many miracles that he had performed all throughout Jerusalem. They hadn't heard, no doubt on many occasions, the things that Jesus had testified about. You know, you walk with, some people say, well, how could they not know Jesus when they walked with him? They were there with him, went through the things that he went through, didn't understand. But see, sometimes God does not want them to recognize See, sometimes you're going through things. Hello, lights and walls. You're going through things because God is trying to accomplish something else. He has you going through that sometimes just to test your faith. See, the original language conveys the sense that, that we are kept from recognizing him because God had a purpose in blinding their eyes from reality. Jesus is not being cruel here. We think, well, oh, he's being cruel. Why, 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 why wouldn't you allow him to recognize him? But his gradual re uh, revelation of himself allows him to learn certain lessons about trusting God. And see, sometimes you're going through things, so you're learning a lesson of how to trust God, how to lean and depend on God. When things go wrong, I can call on my God, and I know that my God is going to be there to answer prayer. Disciples have been told about these events. They told him. He told him, okay, well, this is going to happen. They're going to have to take me. I'm going to have to die. Peter said, oh, no, no, no. You know, Peter cut a man here off. They said, oh, no. See, sometimes we want things to happen the way we want it to happen. See, that's the problem. See, events have not happened as expected. See, when Jesus came on this earth, People were looking for this great warrior to come in riding on this great white stallion, and he's going to save me. Oh, all this stuff that I done went through, y'all done put me in slavery and did all this. Oh, but my big brother is coming, and he's going to free me up from all of this. That's what they were looking for. That's why they didn't recognize him. They had a preconceived idea of what Jesus was supposed to be and who he was supposed to be. And so they didn't see him. Well, God always has a plan. We're not always privy to God's plan. <laughs> Amen. Amen, Lysenwald. We don't know the mind of God. We don't know what his plan is. 
When things don't turn out like we expect, instead of giving up, we need to trust God. You know, sometimes we, we give up and oh, well, it don't do me any use to pray. Sometimes God is trying to see where you are. He's trying to see how much faith do you have. He's trying to see, you know, I trust you as long as things are going right. But trust me when things are going wrong. Trust me when I don't have nobody else to, to pray to. Trust me when everything looks like it's falling down around me and I don't have nowhere to look but up. You see, they had a little faith. They had heard the reports of the women who went to the tomb. They came, hey, we went to the tomb. He's not there. He's not there. Now, remember, he told me three days. I'm getting up. He's not there. So what happened in three days? They run to the tomb and peep in. I got to see. Hey, he's not there. You know how we are. We need to be careful to not make the same mistake about God and, and how we look at things and how we understand things. So you see, God used the natural in order to accomplish the spiritual. He also does things that we can neither explain nor understand. See, the disciples knew something had happened, but it was beyond their level. And what they say is beyond my pay grade. You know, I, I, I don't have anything like that. All I got to do is just trust God for who he is. I got to believe in God because God said that this was going to happen. You know, I, you know we got to get like some of the old saints used to be. God said it, I believe it, and that's it. See, we used to have people like that. We used to have people that stood on God's word. You didn't have to worry about it. They were going, I don't care what they were going through. They were going to stand firm. Just because they knew about Jesus does not mean that they knew him. We know about Jesus does not mean we know him. Just because they could see him does not mean that they could see who he was. Many people today know who Jesus is. Hello, likes and walls. Uh, they've heard about him. They read about him. They used his name many times and even claimed to know him. But they would not recognize Jesus. If they and that's the way it is sometimes. We say, you know, I'm reminded of a story that I heard with a, uh, Reverend Leo Daniels. You know, Reverend Leo Daniels said, you know, some people just lie just to, for the sake of lying. He said he was at the barbershop one day and this man was in there, oh man, that Leo Daniels is so and so and so and so. This Leo Daniels is here and he's just talking about Leo. Leo sitting right there in the shop. He said, oh, oh, you know Leo Daniels? He said, yeah, I know him. He said, oh, hi, look. He said, oh, he a bright man. Leo said, I know he lying because he would say he knows he was dark. But nowhere in there that he was bright. But sometimes people just lie just for the sake of lying. In verse 27, then Moses began uh, from all the people. Jesus interpreted for them concerning himself in scripture. While we do not know the specific passages that Jesus used, because they did say he was opening the scriptures to them. He was teaching them. Sometimes we have to go through things. Perhaps Jesus began with Genesis 3 and 15. Well, God cursed the serpent. He said, I would put hostility between you and the woman and between your seed and his and her seed. And he will strike your head and you will strike his heel. Things are already in motion. See, we don't understand. From there, we might have been Deuteronomy 18, chapter 15, verse, when God says, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own brethren. You must listen to him. You know, I can look around and I say, you know, me, me and Ellie have been knowing each other for many years. I know you probably, probably say, well, Charles preaching? <laughs> God moves us in certain ways that, that I, I, I don't even understand sometimes. If you would have told me I'd be up here talking to you, I'd say, because if you got to know me, I was a very quiet person. It didn't say much. So it was for me to stand before you and preach like this, it was nobody but God. Perhaps Jesus just showed them what Isaiah 53 and 7 said. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb led to slaughter, like a sheep silent before his shears, he did not open his mouth. All say he didn't mumble, not a mumbling word. Maybe Jesus quoted Zechariah 12 and 10. He said, then I will pour out a spirit of grace and prayer on the house of David. 
and the residents of Jerusalem, and they will look at me whom they pierce. They will mourn for him as one mourns for an only child, weeping bitterly for him as you weep for your firstborn. See, scripture gives testimony of who Jesus is. And he uses that today to open our eyes. You know, we've heard about Jesus, his resurrection Sunday. What does that really mean to you? It means life to you. It means another chance. God of another chance. You know, if he let us go and where we were going, we were headed straight to hell. And nobody could stop us. In John 5 and, and 46, he said, for if you believe Moses, he, you know, Jesus told him, and you, would, you believe Moses and you would believe me because he wrote about me. He was trying to tell people who he was. Many people would try to tell you who Jesus is. They would tell you, well, he's one of the, he's a great prophet. Uh, he's a good teacher. He's a rebel. He's a Roman. They really didn't know who Jesus was. The one, that is one of the reasons that it's more important for all of the scripture, to read all the scripture of God's word. You know, we got the Old Testament. The Old Testament is, is prophecy given. New Testament is prophecy fulfilled. You ought to be able to go from the old to find out how we got to the new in order to understand who Jesus is. God prevented these two disciples from recognizing Jesus as they conveyed a deep truth. Even if we were to see, we still might not believe. If Jesus walked in here today, we probably wouldn't believe it. Uh, we must trust the testimony of the scripture. But Jesus tells us that we have the scriptures, scriptorial truth to understand. In Romans 10 and 17, he said, he tells us that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We have to stand on that. Outside of the word of God, there is no reliable witness to who Jesus is. And Jesus reveals himself. You know, as they walk in the home, that Emmaus walk, and they, they've been there talking. They've been talking about the crucifixion and all that happened and how they, they, they hung him high, stretched him wide, and put him in a tomb. They tell him all of this. It was with, and then, you know, Jesus was walking with them. And Jesus reveals himself to them and those whose eyes he had opened through the truth of the world. It is now without significance most of his preaching and understanding around the dinner table. You know, we, we talked about that. You know, you don't invite everybody to your dinner table, his special people. So he, he, he fellowship, he was telling them the story and he broke bread with them. And then he said, well, and they talked and he talked about all, he said, after the resurrection, many appearances of Jesus were associated with table fellowship, you know. And John 1 and Acts, in Acts 1 and 4, and in John 21 and 9, but, you know, Jesus used the intimacy of fellowship, being together, breaking bread with each other, sitting down where I can talk with you. You at my breakfast, you at my dinner table. So I know you. I, I'm not going to invite my enemy to my dinner table, but my friends, I bring them close. But when they recognize him, then Jesus disappeared. He disappeared because fellowship with him was not going to depend on just being able to see him. You know, sometimes you have to be able to trust you. I got to know, I, I, I can't see him, but I trust him. When I'm going through my illness, I can't see him, but I trust him. Oh, when it gets hard in my life, I can't see him, but I trust him for who he is. And you got to notice that sometimes when you trust Jesus for who he is without seeing him, look, things open up. Everybody in here has a story that you can look back. You can look back and say, well, I remember when I went through this, and you don't know how you got out of it. Nobody but God brought you. See, can you imagine the excitement that must have felt? They said to one, oh, did our hearts burn while he was speaking with us. And he was explaining the scriptures to them. Their encounter with Jesus had been emotional. It had stirred them on the inside. It had moved their very heart. And once they move, we could not help but share. And see, that's the thing about Jesus. If you got Jesus, you ought to share. And that's not somebody you just keep to yourself. 
But I want to show you. you know, like what one, 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 one writer said, oh, it's like five. Shut up in my bones. I, I, I couldn't keep it to myself. I had to go out and tell somebody how he brought me out of the muck in miry clay. How he blessed me even when I didn't deserve blessing. That's the Jesus that I serve. And see, all who have experienced the risen Savior should be moved with a similar emotions. All who have come to know him should react the same way. We should not be able to contain the goodness of Jesus. He said in his words that because you've seen me, you have believed. But those who believe without seeing are blessed. I want to ask you a question. Do you know Jesus this morning? Have your eyes been open? Do you know who he is and what he's done? Do you know that he walks with me? You know that he talks with me? You know that he tells me I'm his own? I don't know about the God that you serve, but the God that I serve is able. Do you have a fellowship with him? Have your experience been so real and so moving that it's been a life-changing event that you ought to go out and tell somebody about Jesus?